start now. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. We may now be seated. We shall now witness the President signing into law the bill creating the Department of Migrant Workers. May we invite our distinguished guests to join the President and witness the signing and enactment of this law. Witnessing are Senate President Vicente Soto III, House Speaker Lord Alan Velasco, House Majority Leader Ferdinand Martin Romualdez, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Christopher Lawrence Goh, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Cincha Villar, Senator Aimee Marcos, Representative Mario Vittorio Marino, Representative Ron Salo, Representative Raymond Democrito Mendoza, Representative Eric Goyap. May we also invite the following officials to stand and witness the signing. Executive Secretary Salvador Mejaldea, Foreign Affairs Secretary Teodoro Loxin Jr., Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestre Bello III, Cabinet Secretaries and Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Carlo Alexi Nograles, Acting Presidential Advisor on Legislative Affairs Secretary Luz Verfeda Pascual, Presidential Advisor on OFW Abdullah Mamao, Representative Mark Go, House Secretary General Mark Leandro Mendoza, OWA Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak and POEA Administrator Bernard Olalia. Upon the President's signature, House Bill Number 5832 and Senate Bill Number 2234 shall now become known as Republic Act Number 11641 entitled an act creating the Department of Migrant Workers, defining its functions, rationalizing the organization and functions of government agencies related to overseas employment and labor migration, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. May we invite everyone to face the cameras for a quick photo opportunity. Thank you, Mr. President. We may now all be seated. 
At this juncture, we would like to announce that the President has prior to this date already signed into law House Bill Number 10373 as Republic Act Number 11640 entitled an act extending the availability of the 2021 appropriations to December 31, 2022, amending for the purpose Section 62 of the General Provisions of Republic Act No. 11518, the General Appropriations Act of Fiscal Year 2021. This law will allow government agencies to fully utilize the unused budget for 2021 for the implementation of priority programs and projects. For this, we thank you, Mr. President. And now, we shall witness the President sign into law the General Appropriations Act for Fiscal Year 2022. May we invite our distinguished guests to join the President and witness the enactment of this law. Witnessing are Senate President Vicente Soto III, House Speaker Lord Alan Velasco, House Majority Leader Ferdinand Martin Romualdez, Senator Juan Edgardo Sani Angara, Representative Eric Goyap, Senator Christopher Lawrence Go, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator Amy Marcus, Deputy Speaker Bernadette Herrera D, Deputy Speaker Divina Grace Yu, Deputy Speaker Rodante Marcoleta, Under Secretary Tina Rose Kanda of the Department of Budget and Management, Repre Representative Mark Go, Representative Democrito Mendoza, Representative Marvi Marino, Representative Jose Enrique Garcia, Philippine National Police Chief, Police General Leonardo Carlos. May we also invite the following officials to stand and witness the signing of this law. Executive Secretary Salvador Mejaldea, National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, Agriculture Secretary William Dar, Labor and Employment Secretary Silvestre Bello III, Cabinet Secretary and Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Carlo Alexi Nograles, Trade and Industry Secretary Ramon Lopez, Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rolando Rosalito Bautista, Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año, Education Secretary Leonor Briones, Higher Education Chairperson J. Prospero Mendo uh, de Vera, Acting Information and Communications Technology Secretary Emmanuel Reika Intic. Public Works and Highways Acting Secretary Roger Mercado, Acting Presidential Advisor on Legislative Affairs Secretary Luz Verfeda Pascual, National Security Advisor Secretary Hermogenes Esperon, Presidential Advisor on the Peace Process Secretary Carlito Galvez, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority Secretary Isidro La Pena. House Secretary General Mark Leandro Mendoza. Upon the President's signature, House Bill Number 10153 shall now become known as Republic Act Number 11639, entitled "An Act Appropriating Funds for the Operation of the Government of the Republic of the Philippines from January 1 to December 31, 2022." May we invite everyone to face the cameras for a quick photo opportunity. Thank you, Mr. President.
At this point, may we call on Executive Secretary Salvador Medjaldea. One more picture. At this point, okay. may we now request your honors to take your respective seats. At this point, may we call on Executive Secretary Salvador Medjaldea to introduce our keynote speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Kindly sit down. Salamat po. Senate President Vicente Soto, uh, nandito po kayo. Uh, I would like to apologize for the Rocos, eh, uh, uh, they're very strict. Uh, uh, well, that is, uh, trabaho nila yan. So, if there are lapses, uh, I apologize to you publicly. House Speaker Lord Alan Velasco. Yes, sir. Executive Secretary Salvador Midaldia. Senator Bongo, Education Secretary Leonor Briones, National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, Cabinet Secretary and Acting Presidential Spokesperson Carlo Alexi Nograles, Trade and Ministry Secretary Ramon Lopez, Social Welfare and Development Secretary Rolando Bautista, Interior and Local Government Secretary Eduardo Año, National Security Council Secretary Herbujeres Spiron, Presidential Advisor for Peace, Reconciliation and Unity, Carlito Galvez, TESDA Director Isidrio La Peña, Presidential Advisor on Legislative Affairs, Secretary Lucifer Pida Pascal, Agrarian Reform Secretary Bernie Cruz, Information and Communication Technology Secretary, Acting Secretary Emmanuel Caintic, Budget and Management Officer in Charge, Tina Rose Mary Kanda, Senator Juan Edgardo Angara, Senator Cynthia Villar, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Amy. Marcos, Senator Francis Tolentino, House Majority Leader Fernando Martin Rumaldes, 
Deputy Secretary Eric Martinez, Deputy Secretary Bernadette Herrera, Herrera D, Deputy Secretary Divina Grace U, Deputy Secretary Rodante Amarcaleto, De Deputy Speaker, rather, ACCIS Party List Representative Eric Yap, Matangas 5th District. Representative Mario Vittorio Marino Marino Baguio City Lone District Representative Mark Go Bataan Second District Representative Jose Enrique Garcia the Third Cabayan Party List Representative Ron Salo uh, Fellow Workers in Government or the Distinguished Guests and of course you know, uh, my wife, uh, kinausap lang niya si uh, Senator Marcoleta kasi bilib siya. And department, bilib siya sa tao. Department Secretary, Department Secretary, Agra talaga, Agrarian Reform, William Dar. Hindi ito siya. Sino ang sulat ito? Protocol, kindly. Isa ulit mo ito. Sino ang sulat ito? Tapong yan sa Pasigo. It's agrarian reform. It's uh, Secretary of Agri Agriculture, William Dar. Kasama ko ka, kahapon nun sa... Nauwi ka kaagad. Saan tayo nakita, sir, sa... Bais. Uh, okay. I was just the, a few words after this speech. Express my appreciation to the members of Congress for ensuring the timely ratification of the more than 5 trillion peso national budget. I also recognize the efforts of our government agencies, our partners from civil society and other civil servants who took part in the crafting of this important legislation. Indeed, the passage of General Appropriation Act of 2022 reflects the healthy collaboration among all branches of government, which is crucial to the attainment of our national development goals, especially during these trying times. The 2022 budget reaffirms the government's strong commitment provide a more comfortable and productive life for its Filipino. This, is, this will also cement this administration's legacy of real change for future generations, guided by the three main pillars of building resiliency amidst the pandemic, sustaining the momentum towards recovery and continuing the legacy of infrastructure development. The establishment of the Department of Migrant Workers happens on the celebration of Rizal Day, when we honor not only the exceptional love of country of Dr. Jose Rizal, but also the patriotism, excellence, courage of our modern-day heroes, including our overseas Filipino. As we mark the signing of the 2022 National Budget and other specific laws, that will benefit all Filipinos. Let us all emulate Rizal's heroism and courage by serving our country with dedication, integrity, accountability, by doing what is right and just for our people. There is no better way to serve the Filipino people but by giving them the honest, efficient, and responsive government that they deserve. 
bago ako magsalamat po. Ah, uh, konti at this time, it's just uh, uh, a little bit worry, worry some. But uh, takot ako na itong Omicron because uh, pumupotok na sa lahat ng bayan sa buong mundo. At nakikita ko na in those places, if you listen to the other international TV network, uh, nakikita ko na malaki in one day, 200 Uh, hindi naman ito, I think, a fatal uh, mutant. But, ang takot ko yung resources naman ng government, may, may bagong budget tayo, pero that would not really help in, in, sa ano natin, in our desire to rebuild because wag lang sana If we are hit with the easy transmission of the character of this mutant, we will have again the same problem. I say, though it is not, they say, a, a lethal mutant or micro, well, I, I, I am just giving you the, what is bothering me. It might... Uh, translate into a, again, uh, for government to pour again the resources of the new resurgence of uh, COVID-19 with another form. So, yan lang, pag ano ko sa inyo, uh, I'm leaving the office in a few months. Ang uh, tatakot lang ako yung response na naman natin and how it would intrude into the budget na although we expect nandito pa yung pandemic tumatakbo pero kung ang hawaan talagang mabilis then uh, we will have the same problem again. Uh, it's not a matter of predicting how many will die, but rather uh, preparing for how many people that will be affected by this uh, mutant. Eh, kung nakakahawa uli, baski bakunado ka na, I really do not know how to... I just hope that... Uh, We will cope up, if ever, but uh, we can hardly, you know, mawalaan ang elborom ng itong budget na ito to respond to the new challenge of a new variant of the COVID-19. So that's, it is what was what worrying me. Yun lang. Otherwise, okay naman. Kung may dadating yan, it stares eyeball to eyeball sa atin. I hope Congress, uh, the lower and upper house would, uh, kayo kasi ang ano rin yan eh. Eventually, Congress would be the one who would handle this thing. You, you have to pass the laws that will be needed, I said, to cope up with this new problem looming in the horizon. Yan lang po. At marami, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Wala na po. Yun lang. Thank you, Mr. President. A round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our program. Maraming salamat, mahal na Pangulo, sa inyong malasakit at paglagda ng bagong batas na tutok sa kapakanan ng ating mga bagong bayani, ang mga OFWs, 
at sa pagpasa ng pambansang budget tungo sa matatag, maginhawa at panatag na buhay ng bawat Pilipino. Again, ladies and gentlemen, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. I love my country and I love the people of the Philippines. We would like to request everyone to please remain seated until the President has left the hall. Thank you.